Hi there and welcome along to a wee video for lockdown leadership. Um, I just thought that I would go through a few of the tips which I guess I've relearnt or learnt during this lockdown period. Now these tips uh, aren't just for when we're in lockdown, you can actually use them for remote management after the lockdown and of course you can even use them for when you are back at the office so don't just think this one is for the here and now i know we've probably got another two to three weeks worth of lockdown at the point of this recording but uh, this one is uh, perfectly acceptable for later on use so a little bit about me uh, my name's alistair um, as it says there, I'm only serious about half the time, so whether I'm being serious right now, I guess by the end of this video, you'll be the judge of that one. Um, I'm a geek. I somehow managed to have some sort of social graces, although again, you can be the judge of that one. Um, I'm definitely getting too fat on lockdown. I've been trying to give my team advice about staying fit and healthy during the lockdown, but um, so far, I don't think I'm really leading by example on that one, so I need to sort that one out pronto. Um, as I say, I've got 21 years of IT experience and 12 of those have been in leadership roles, uh, both in the UK and here in New Zealand. So today's agenda is very, it's a very quick presentation, but hopefully it will be of use to you if you're in a leadership role. And even if you're in an aspiring leadership role, perhaps you're just uh, starting out in management and you want to understand a little bit of the differences and how you can uh, gain more um, more skills, I guess, in the leadership area. So the, the, the five agenda items you see uh, in front of you, trust your team, close contact, empower and coach your team, using technology to bridge this gap and finally being excellent to each other. So let's start with trusting your team, also known as don't be a dick. Um, so a little bit about me again, this is not um, self-fulfilling, this is the truth. I'm rubbish admitting when I'm wrong, right? Not so great, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better all the time. And what these uh, mistakes uh, that I've had, they're, they're learning to teach me about you know, leading the team. And in the past, I have have been a bit of a control freak, I will admit that, um, which is certainly not a good attribute for leading a team, and even worse if you're re leading a team remotely. So certainly something, if you think you're a control freak, and I'll go over this in just a second, if you think you might be a control freak, then it's probably time that you need to reassess that. So anyway, if you admit you've made a mistake or you've made mistakes, then it's good to share that with your team. Again, this is all about leading by example because if you're leading and you're showing people that you too are not infallible, you are making mistakes, then people can see that it's okay to make mistakes and to own up to making those mistakes. And I learn through making mistakes and I dare say I'm not the only one in that situation. So let's put our previous leadership mistakes to good use and help learn uh, learn by that to help with uh, remote management. So again, just to recap on why we are here, right? So are we leaders or are we managers? So I've got a few things on the screen there you can see and you can you can judge for yourself, but um, I think the, the important ones you can tell there are about the, um, the vision versus objectives, that's on the provides one, appeal to the hearts rather than minds, and have a passion for what you do. If you're not passionate, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it's, it's gonna come off and it's gonna be reflected in the work that you do and also be the way that your team perceive you. But the, probably the most important one for today's session is at the bottom, it's about focus. In a leader, you lead and empower people. In a manager, you manage and control people, right? So it's not a dictatorship. What you're doing is trying to empower your, your staff to actually get the best out of them that they can possibly be. So I said earlier on about being a control freak. Well, what does, what does that actually mean? Now, I've given some examples about things that you might say to yourself if you are a control freak. So um, internalize this, you don't have to say this out loud, um, I'm a control freak, but just have a think about whether you've asked yourself these questions before. So a question that I might have asked myself before is, oh, for God's sake, I'll just do it, it'll be faster and better if I do it myself. 
Or another question might be, if everyone just thought on the same level as me, then life would be so much better. Um, or there's other questions, again, can I trust this particular person to finish the work on time, especially since we're on lockdown? Or will this team uh, take advantage of remote working since nobody's watching them, right? So a particular person, you might think, mm, I don't know if I can trust them. They're not going to come in and do the, do the work. They're just going to go off and watch the TV. Um, and then the final one, which is potentially the most dangerous of them all, should I go into micromanagement mode just be, just uh, through this lockdown period uh, because the team are so remote, I, I don't know if I can trust them. So going into micromanagement is next level, don't do it. And um, so I'll talk about all of, how, all of the reasons why these are really bad things in the next few slides. But trusting the team is where it's all at. So how do you ensure that you can trust your team? Well, first, set the right expectations, agree to talk more. So you're going to need to increase the levels of communication that you have with your team, empower them. And I'll talk a bit more about the detail of that in a moment. And then finally, look, it might just seem obvious here, but just trust them. It, it will work out, I promise. So I'm going to tell you a wee story right now, and it's called The Lazy Doctor. It's a true story, and it happened to me. It's not the best story in the world, but it'll get the message across anyway. So it's uh, The Lazy Doctor, a.k.a. Empowering the Team. So once upon a time, a bunch of years ago, I went to the doctor with a minor complaint. Now, this was back in Glasgow, so this must have been at least 11 or 12 years ago now. Anyway, I went along with a minor complaint, nothing serious. And I, and I asked him, look, doctor, what's the problem here? And he said, what do you think it is? And so I told him what I thought it was. And he said, you're right, here, have a script. And I went home to my, and I thought to myself, have I just been ripped off? So I went back to the same doctor a few months later with another issue. And the same thing happened. He asked me, what do you think it is? And I sat and I thought about it. And I, I told him what I thought about it. And he said, yep, you're right. Here's the script. But this time, rather than going, have I been ripped off, I thought about the situation differently. And I thought, you know what? I can trust my gut to answer these questions. Then I'm probably able to answer them most of the time. So the doctor's probably trusting me a little bit to make the right call um, because there were fairly minor complaints anyway. So that kind of made me think about all of this. He said, I said to myself, actually, we're all clever people and trusting your first instincts is probably the right answer. Now, if I empower my own team to make the decisions for themselves rather than me prescribe my advice straight away, they'll feel trusted, they'll have more autonomy and produce better, quicker results. So that's empowering, right? So in other words, I leave my team to think for themselves. I give staff the ownership of the problems. And if they want, they can seek guidance from me if they need. They don't feel that they need to have my permission to do something. And of course, empowering them to make their own mistakes. That's the way I learn. And of course, hopefully they'll learn in the same fashion as well. But it is important, obviously, to set expectations, but you do that in agreement with your team members. You don't dictate the expectations. You say, look, these are the things that we should discuss. And, and when you communicate them, you need to communicate properly the duties, the deadlines, and also the priorities. Simple things like that. And, and, and these are time, time proven things. They're not new to anybody here. Going on to personalities and so forth, everybody is different. But I think most importantly, right now, during this lockdown, it's about how people manage their time. And it's important to appreciate, obviously, that people are different, but we need to be looking out for people, uh, everybody's well-being. Now, you'll see more of this in a few slides about being excellent to each other. Suffice it to say, though, talk to your team members individually about their start time, their end time, and of course, break times. And my recommendation to you, as a leader would be to make sure that they have their own agreed time in their calendar so they kind of force themselves to actually take this time and of course like I was talking about earlier with being getting a bit chubby is uh, to make sure that you're encouraging them to uh, exercise as well so as I say here it's easy to work and not take breaks and also eat where you work 
but help your staff block time in their calendars. All right, so going on to communication then, keep in close contact and culture, AKA people love, know they need to talk to each other. It's very important that we keep up conversation all the time. And uh, I've I heard this uh, thrown about quite a lot by the other leaders in my uh, organization recently. It's better to over communicate than to under communicate. And I think that's pretty true. I mean, everybody needs to stay together, especially during this hard time. But even when you're at the workplace and everything's back to normal, it's still important to keep in close contact. And this couldn't be truer uh, today than ever before. So how do I do that? During lockdown, it's pretty much the same drill, uh, but there's slight nuances to how that works. So I have a stand up every morning back at the office. I still have a stand up every morning, but however, it's a little bit more fun. And I emphasize the fact that it's really important to have that fun because if you don't, people might start tuning out. It's important to look out for your fellow people and you as the leader, you should be setting that example so that everybody starts to think about each other member in the team and everybody just starts looking out for everybody. And of course as well, if you have any small wins that you can celebrate, things that have gone well at a customer, things that have happened in the team that people should perhaps be proud of, Celebrate those quick wins, celebrate all, all the little chances you have to improve the morale of the individuals. Bear in mind that some of these people might not have anybody else in their house, they might be on their own. So anything we can do to make that time more enjoyable is a really important thing. It's not all about work, work, work. And on the other side of it, have lots of one-on-ones. Don't just make it a team thing. And of course, all leaders, will have one-on-ones, it's, it's pretty uh, part of the course these days, but make sure more than ever that you are listening to what your team members are saying, look at their body language, I'll talk about the technology in just a second, but develop what they need in terms of how their skills should adapt and so forth. More than ever, again, it's all about helping them develop their skills um, to work remotely and then empathize. Make sure you're listening to what they have to say and actually understanding what it is that they need from you. Sometimes that's very difficult. That, that part about understanding what they need from you is something that is an undercurrent. It's not always clearly defined by the individual. But of course as well, have fun, laugh, make sure you're not keeping it serious, work, work, work all the time. So um, talking about technology, using technology to compensate is really important. Now, a lot of people use email and I use email, but again, if you're just emailing, you're going to miss a part of that important body language. So using video conferencing has come a long way. That technology is really good these days. I use Zoom, here's, here's some of the Motley crew that work with me. And you can see some of us are happy in that photo and some of us <laughs> are not so happy. And I think that was uh, just a snapshot. But basically having the ability to look at people's faces and seeing what's going on with the body language. Everybody's just slightly different. So it's important to have the ability to, to look into it. Obviously, um, video con conferencing is not a replacement for the real thing, but uh, you know it will help an awful lot. So you just have to pay extra attention, I guess, during the lockdown. And then it moves on to culture. Of course, culture is something a lot of people talk about and actually nothing's done about. Culture, again, I'm just, just the bottom bullet alone is, to me, is the most important thing about culture. If you can have fun, you can be passionate about what you do and understand the, the why of what you do, then everything else will fall into place with regards to culture in the workplace. So, you know, base everything you have in the culture on those elements and then use your charisma as, your, as, a, as a leader to enliven the spirits and make sure you rise up with that culture. Um, as I say, remind your team of the purpose that they have in the organization and their purpose as individuals and the values as well. Why are you all here? What do you do? Are you here just to make a profit for the organization? Most people would say no, that's not why they go to work in the, in the morning. And let, you, let your team know, of course, that each individual in the team has a part to play in extolling that culture into their colleagues and of course the clients as well. So coaching and mentoring 
aka leading by example. We've touched on leading by example a few times, but give tips on time management. I guess at this point in time, talking about things like blocking time out in your calendar is really important. So just keep on doing that sort of stuff. Um, think about the lazy doctor. Ask what your teammate thinks he or she should do and keep encouraging them to have their own thoughts. Teach your team leads, uh, teammates sorry, to be leaders themselves and keep track of their progress. And finally then, it's about being excellent to each other and of course party on dudes. So how to be excellent to each other? We're all in the same boat, we all have the same potential issues. Um, but again, everybody reacts differently. So making sure that we look out for each other. Mental health is the biggest thing that we can we can talk about in this and keeping that conversation open is really important. So stick together, look out for each one another and then give each other kudos. You know, if, if somebody recognizes something that's important, something that's achieved, then, you know, help each other talk about things that you've achieved in the organization. Encourage everyone to get into exercise, as I mentioned. Make it a challenge, perhaps. You know, I've got I've got Strava on my phone, and I've started to invite people within the team to uh, the the Strava challenge, so we can all sort of get fit together. And then, of course, party on, dudes. Have after work virtual drinks, yarns, whatever. If you don't drink in your organization, whatever. But uh, just you know, just have fun. It's really important that at the end of the week. You relax again. Like I said, some people aren't even, uh, you know, they don't have anybody else in their bubble. It's just them, and it's important to try and corral everyone to be included in these sort of after work events. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. I really hope that this has helped or inspired you, or at least even just reminded you of um, of what it is to be a leader in this particularly hard time. Thanks very much for your time, and if you have any questions or comments please uh, drop them uh, in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.